This time I know for perspectives, I got Coach Bobby Wilder, and I don't know if we're going to talk about football or not, but you'll find out. Norfolk Fire Inspector, recognized for a great award, and you're going to be glad she serves you. Making a difference through education, and then we're going to learn about water safety and April pools, I think they're calling it. Stay tuned for some great stuff right here on Norfolk Perspectives. Welcome to Norfolk Perspectives. I'm Bob Batcher, and am I excited here because Coach Bobby Wilder is sitting right there on the sofa. How you doing? <laughs> Living the dream every day. It's been a couple of uh, months since you've been on, and I think the last sure. time you were on with the sheriff. And oh. Now you're all on your own. Really? You yeah. did that to me? <laughs> I know. <laughs> He's a good man. I know. Yes. In good fact, man. mentioning that, I mean, you mm -hmm. and I, we met about, yeah, I think you were three weeks uh, in town. You're right. We met on the golf course. I was mm -hmm. selling raffle tickets. You were holding up the foursome. <laughs> um, it's been five and a half years. Mm -hmm. Let's talk. Is it like what you thought it was going to be? It's everything and more. It's, uh, I tell people all the time, I feel like I'm living the dream. I feel like I've got the greatest job in the world working for Old Dominion University, living in Hampton Roads in the city of Norfolk. It's everything I had hoped for and more. Okay, so they raised the bar high on you. Mm -hmm. You show up and you do the worst possible thing you could do. You raise it even higher. <laughs> Are they reminding you of that first season? <laughs> Not at all. I, I think it's I think it's outstanding. I think it should be a goal in life for everybody that if you if you reach a high standard like we've done with our football program, we've been the winningest startup program in the 130 year history mm -hmm. of college football. Expectations are high and and we want them that way. We want to achieve at a high level all the time. Our philosophy within our program is why do anything in life if you're not going to try to be the best you can be. Try to be the best you can be, and our philosophy is to aim high as a program, and that's what we're going to continue to work to do. And some of the times if I woke you up at 3 o'clock in the morning, you'd say the same thing. <laughs> okay, I'm here in NFL, too. Not for you, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, we and have a kind of right. We have around. a current uh, one of our current student athletes, uh, Ronnie Cameron, who was um, the CAA Student Athlete of the Year. He was the CAA Defensive Player of the Year. He was a first-team All-American defensive lineman. Uh, he graduated from Old Dominion in four and a half years, Bob, with his undergraduate degree and his MBA wow. as a Dean's List student. And he's being projected to be somewhere between the fifth, the seventh round uh, draft choice at the end of April during the NFL draft. How about that for a okay. success story? Now, do you feel like a proud papa or a proud coach or both? Both. Uh, my wife and I tell people all the time we have uh, two wonderful boys at home, and then mm -hmm. we have 90, 95 boys at my office. So I'm the proud parent of 97 boys. <laughs> oh, boy. And they're all well-behaved. <laughs> they are all outstanding people, and every day we're just trying to get a little better. Okay, let's talk about it. I mean, is mm -hmm. it is it uh, the time on the football field, or is mm -hmm. it the time before and after the football field that you focus on? Uh, we focus the most on what happens off the field. Mm -hmm. and the first part of what we're trying to do is recruit and develop the best people that we can find and helping young people become better people, teaching them how to make a great presentation, teaching them how to make the right choices in life. Life really comes down to the choices you make. So trying to help young people with that. And then the, the second part of it, the most important thing is, is the academic standpoint. As I tell all our football student athletes all the time, less than 1% of all college football players go on to play in the NFL. There's mm -hmm. 1,500 jobs. The top 150 players make the majority of the money. So it's great to dream that dream. I have personally in my 25 year career coached 20 players that have gone on and played in the NFL, but the average career is three and a half years. So it's great to dream the dream. Aim as high as you can, but we need to prepare them for what's gonna happen beyond football. And that's the most important thing we do. Okay, let me, I'm gonna, um ask you, uh, there was a pretty big game for the city of Norfolk, anyway, mm -hmm. for our residents, uh, the Thanksgiving weekend. Yeah, I, I felt like that was an historic game for Hampton Roads, for Norfolk, our, our playoff game, first round of the FCS playoffs, the national championship tournament. We had the privilege of hosting Norfolk State in that game, and, and regardless of the score or who won the mm -hmm. game, the fact that our two great institutions competed in a game of football, because remember, it's just a game, and well, that's all it was. That's what I want to say, because, I mean, there are some that would say it's mm -hmm. just football. What's mm -hmm. the big to-do? But mm -hmm. it's not just football, is it? Well, it was an historical game from the standpoint of 
never before in the history of college football in the playoffs had two teams from the same city met in right. the national championship tournament. The fact there were 20,000 people at S.B. Ballard Stadium, if that stadium would have held 50,000 people, I think 50,000 right. people would have been at that game. It was a beautiful day. It was a well-played game by both teams, and I think it was historical for this region from the standpoint of the fact that, again, it was just a football game, but it brought our two institutions closer together. Okay, you mentioned the weather. i got to talk about weather. Cause you, <laughs> as I recall, you're from that state of Maine. I am, the, uh, the pine tree state. Yeah, and we got lucky because when you got the phone call, as I recall, you had about 12 inches of snow on the ground <laughs> and right. more coming, and it was 50 degrees <laughs> here. Okay, did you make the right decision? Absolutely. This has been fabulous for myself, for my family. We, we absolutely love living in this area. It's home. You know, Maine's a great place to visit, but very excited to be a Virginian. Now, are you getting the, you getting the family to come down here? Yes, they, my family, my wife's family, they love to come visit. They love to come to the games. And this, as you know, Hampton Roads is a great place to live right. and a great place to visit. Okay, I, this is a personal question. We were kind of mm -hmm. talking in pre-tape because the rest of the show, mm -hmm. I'm going to be put on the spot because it's about uh, getting into shape and, <laughs> and being recognized. Now, you, you run around a football field, so what's mm -hmm. your exercise program, your health program? Chasing around 97 boys. <laughs> there you in go. Great shape. I try to do something every day. I'm a firm believer that at least for 30 minutes a day, you need to find time in your day for some form of exercise. You know, I like to, I like to jog. I like to lift weights. I like to go for walks. You know, my wife and I walk in the dog. Just something every day to, uh, to take care of my body because with all of us we've all got things that keep us busy with work and at times life gets stressful it's great to have that stress release where you can do something to relax and really feel good about yourself okay you just got me then when karen tells me i have to exercise i'll just tell her i'll relax and feel good about myself <laughs> bobby thank you while you're walking there we go <laughs> bobby thanks for being here mm -hmm. um the winningest coach that odu's had in a long long time and we're glad you're here mm -hmm. and uh thanks for joining us thank you very much thank appreciate you, you having appreciate me on appreciate it when we come back we're going to be talking to karen about me getting out of this chair and, and why she won the award stay tuned <laughs> Turning a 20-foot wall into a canvas takes vision. So we're getting into college. I've got what it takes. So do you. Welcome back to Norfolk Perspectives. I'm Bob Batch, and I'm with Karen Barnes, who's a fire inspector with Norfolk Fire and Rescue, an award-winning fire and rescue, right? Yes, sir. Okay, what was the award? It was the Governor's Award of Fire Prevention. Okay, so does that mean you were taking down, uh, putting batteries in? No, what? No, sir. Uh, investigations. That's what you're engaged in. Investigations, inspections. Okay. So, but, I mean, they, they, this was a special award. Yes. You're sir. being humble on me, aren't you? You're, now, we can't talk about necessarily all of it, but Correct. the kinds of things you're involved in, it's not about smoke detectors. No, sir. It is? It is life safety and fire prevention. Okay. Now, you, you and I have been in meeting school over the many, many years mm -hmm. uh, in dealing with event planning and things like that. So what's the fire department got to do with, like, event planning and bars? Um, life safety. We go out and we make sure that it's, it's safe for the public to come to the different locations and the different festivals. Yeah. Okay. So making sure that they're fun places to be. Exactly. Okay. So when somebody calls you a party pooper, what should I tell them? I'm not a party pooper. I'm there. <laughs> I'm there to make sure it's safe for them to to enjoy themselves and to party. Okay. Yeah, because I mean, I think there's there's people who like. Let's take bar task force. We'll read about it in the paper. Mm -hmm. You go in and you and you tell a, a bar they got to close down. That's not necessarily how it happens, is it? No, it's not. It 
If we get to the point of actually having to close the bar, that bar has been warned multiple times. And there's obviously a seriously life safety hazard in that bar that we would have to close it down. Okay. And those kinds of things are blocked doorways, things like that? It's mm. not necessarily about just the bar itself. No, it's uh, overcrowding. It's locked exits. It's blocked exits, storage in the back exit. Uh, issues with the kitchen that could put, you know, potentially cause a fire. So we're out there mainly for the public. Okay. So, okay, let's talk about the public because in our environment today, we're relying quite heavily on the citizen, the, the person who's watching the show. Mm -hmm. What kinds of things can they, can they do to, to make it a safer environment? Well, my, uh, my role in the fire marshal's office is environmental crimes. So we have multiple citizens that are calling me, uh, giving me information about illegal dumping. The big thing is they can help us okay. solve these crimes. Just be, uh, don't engage the person if they're doing something. Take pictures, write down the license plate, description of the vehicle, what they're doing, time of day. Um, and that information given to me, I will go track them down. Now, you've been doing this kind of training for a long time. Yes, sir. Are you getting a reset when we are people saying, well, but Karen, that's your job? Or do they really want to participate? They want to be part of it because they want to take control of their neighborhood. They don't want people coming into their neighborhood and dumping trash in their lots. And they're tired of it. And the citizens in Norfolk here within the last year have stepped forward and is partnering with us to help us. They really want to take their neighborhood back. Yeah, they want to take their neighborhoods back. And yeah. they are. You've been with the fire department for how long now? 26 years. So you were a little toddler when you came <laughs> Yeah, in. right now, out of high school. So how did you start well, How did you start with the fire department? I started out as a paramedic. Oh, okay. Yes, and then in 93, we merged with the fire department. And then uh, when I was riding the uh, engine company, it would be the engine company for 12 hours, and then the ambulance for 12 hours in the 24-hour shift. Okay, I want to switch gears on you. Can I? Okay. Go a little personal here. Okay. I mentioned that I've known you for a long time. Yes. And there's a lot, there's less, <laughs> there's less, uh, how can I say this? There's, there's less Karen Barnes on the sofa than there was a year ago. <laughs> yes, there is. You, you've lost some weight. Yes, I have. Yes, I and have. you've done it with, uh, did you, like I said in the last segment, did you just kind of wake up one morning and it's gone? I wish. No. Oh, so you're going to tell me that it was diet and exercise. Yeah, I work hard at work and I work hard off. I, di uh, I don't like to call it a diet. Diets okay. don't work. You need to make a change of eating. You know, I chose to eat clean and exercise. Now, Coach Wilder just said relax and is that part of it too? <laughs> you need to relax <laughs> because you need to recover. Recover? Yes, you need to recover. Okay, when you said eat clean, what do you mean by that? Eat clean. I don't eat anything processed, and, um, and I've cut out all the salt out of my diet. So I have a very minimal amount of salt in my diet each day. So does that mean no pizza, no soft drinks, no desserts, no? I can have, I do sugar-free desserts. Okay. And um, pizza, I can have a pizza, except I make it with wheat dough, um, and I put uh, no salt, uh, tomato paste. Okay. I used uh, chicken instead of the pepperoni and all the sausage and all the good stuff that I'm sure that you like. I used chicken and then fresh mozzarella and you just load it with vegetables and that's a pizza with some garlic powder. Okay, mm -hmm. it sounds, actually it doesn't sound bad. So it's you're not, not really deprived. Okay, now weights and all that kind of stuff or yeah. is it? Okay. I work out with weights a couple of days a week um, and I uh, do cardio, some classes. Okay, keep moving in other words. Yes. Karen, I want to, from, from the citizen's point of view, I want to say thank you for making sure that we are a safe environment, but also kind of giving us that, that leeway to make a difference in our own community and, and with good information and, and enthusiasm that you seem to share every time you're at the table. Yes, sir. Thank you. So, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Okay, when we come back, we're going to be talking about a bunch of men getting together, and you're going to find out what I'm talking about when we return.
Did you make sure we're not missing anything in the first aid kit? Yep. Did you go through the plan with the kids again? Yes. The more you prepare today, the more you'll be able to reduce the devastating effects of a tornado, an earthquake, a power outage, or any other disaster. Get a kit, make a plan, be informed. Visit ready.gov. Welcome back to Nova Perspectives. Yes, there will be 900 men on Saturday, April 14th at the Chesapeake uh, Conference Center. Right, JR? Yes, sir. Okay. JR Locke, your Executive Director for Community Outreach Marketing uh, Committee for 900 Men Strong. And Anthony Fleming? Yes, sir. The Deacon's Ministry and making this all happen. Right? Yes, sir. That's what he kept saying. You're making it all happen. I'm making it all happen. <laughs> <laughs> Collectively, we will. Okay. I got to ask you, where are the 900 men going to come from? All over Hampton Roads. We're recruiting men from other churches, other civic organizations, you know, fraternities, just all over across Hampton Roads. Okay, yeah, I got to ask you, this is a bunch of guys organ organizing a breakfast for a bunch of guys? Yes, sir. Now, so why did Tracy Hubbard be the one to call me? Because we hired her to help us. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Yeah, absolutely. I just want to make sure. Right. There's some women out there saying, oh, they're in trouble. Okay, why are you doing this? Well, actually, we're, we're looking to make a difference in the community amongst our young males. And as you know, you know, most of the time that finance actually becomes a problem for students. They can have the grades, they can mm -hmm. have the SAT scores and all that, but it always bottomed down to the, to the the financial part of it. And that's where we want to make our difference. Uh, oftentimes, men in the community, we have young boys that are, are trying to do what they can, but we're hoping to come along with other men in the community, cross sector, cross you know, whatever your, your background is, it's not a church organization. It's a, as uh, Brother JR said that it is all men, all men of the community. So we hope to just kind of make a difference that way. Yeah, because I mean, I'm just thinking back when I was 18, 19 years old, making that transition from high school into mm -hmm. college, and I got looking at, oh my goodness, it's a whole, and if I didn't have that support mechanism around me. Absolutely. To kind of nudge. All right. Has any of that changed? <laughs> same thing, isn't it? Same thing, same thing. So this is our launching pad to, to kind of engage men in other areas of the community to kind of come along with us and come along beside us as we help some young people go to college. And there are some people out there that are saying, you know, those 18, 19 year olds, it's a lost cause anyway. Right. How well, do you react when you hear that? I don't think they're a lost cause, but I think what they are also implying is that we need to start at an earlier age mm -hmm. when uh, young men are more impressionable, you know, maybe around the, the 12, 13 year old range, because that's when young men really do need guidance. Mm -hmm. And we, what we really want to accomplish also with this Breakfast Bob is that your people need to realize that we're in a, a national academic mm -hmm. and that our young men are dropping out of school at alarming rates mm -hmm. because particularly in the African-American community, some recent studies have shown that it's close to 50% of African-American young men dropping out of high school. And without education, as you know yourself, I mean, that affects you for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. And you know, where are you going to go to get a job? Uh, when you get a job, you know, how are you going to support your family? Mm -hmm. You know, being able to have the socioeconomic strength to support a family. A lot of that involves around having an education. And the three of us have a responsibility to set that example, right? Absolutely. As, Bob, as absolutely. Coach Walter was saying, raise that bar. Raise, raise the, the bar, bar. Yes. absolutely. And in Hampton Roads, uh, our area, you know, two years ago, we had the worst dropout rate in the state. And we've uh, improved that a great deal. Mm -hmm. But even currently, we have the fourth highest dropout rate in the state of Virginia. And still, we lead the state in terms of having the, the highest average of dropouts in the region. So you've got the cost of the education, but isn't it really kind of somebody coming up to them and saying, you know, I can see it now, kind of whispering in your head, if you, it can cost you 20 grand a year to go to school, or I can hook you up in something really good right now. <laughs> is that the tug of war out there? Well, that is a big tug of war, and I think that's a big part of why we're trying to sponsor this breakfast, to get more men involved. Absolutely. Because if you can just envision, if we could galvanize the men in this community that they can take this message back from the breakfast that their church, civic organization is going to sponsor some type of educational initiative to invite young men in, whether it's once a day, once a week, 
Imagine if, if every group did that for the next two years, what kind of impact we could have on young Absolutely. men. Absolutely. It would make a big difference. Absolutely. Okay. Tracy also shared with me, though, that we can't just talk about the future or generation. we got to sell tickets. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> yeah. how do we sell tickets? Well, she's on point. <laughs> <laughs> so how do we sell tickets? Absolutely. Well, they can go to our church website, secondcavalry.org. The church is... Uh, located in Norfolk, Virginia, 2940 Corporal Avenue. So they can go online and purchase tickets, click on the link for the 900 plus men's prayer breakfast. And they can also get tickets. Tickets are $40 per person. So it's a good opportunity for fathers to bring their sons, their grandsons, and to just be a part of a, a great event. Now, I was greeted this morning, I will tell you, JR, on my Facebook page. Okay, good. Telling good. me the tickets are going fast. Yes, sir. So we better <laughs> do something about that right now and click on Second Calvary. Second Calvary org. Yeah. And, and click on the tickets. click on the nine hundred plus men's logo and then and then they'll set them up and they can register and they can purchase tickets right there online. Super. And it's men only. Men only men at only. this event. So we yes, can talk sir. men talking to men. Yes, sir. Thanks for everything that you guys are doing to really set the course for our future and make that investment in our in our youth and our future generation. Well you know we had the million man march. That's right. Now we have the 900 men strong. I was, say, I was wondering where you were coming up. With. <laughs> yeah. But uh, well, I'm going to count. I'm okay. showing up. Gonna April count. 14th. You're I'm okay, going to count. All right. All right. Okay. Thanks to a lot for <laughs> Thank you. When we get done, <laughs> all right. next segment, we're going to be talking about April Pool. Find out what that's all about when you come back. When some people struggle with their mortgage payments, they become frozen, petrified. Not knowing what to do, they do nothing. But the people who take action are far more likely to get the most positive outcome. Making Home Affordable is a free government program. Call now to talk one-on-one -on -one with a housing expert about the options that are right for you. Real help, real answers, right now. Welcome back to Norfolk Perspectives. I've got Beverly Evans, who's an ARPO Senior Recreation Supervisor, too. Right. You've been doing that for a while, haven't you? Yes. Yeah. And you enjoy it? Love it. Now, what do you what do you do as a Recreation Supervisor, too? I oversee swimming pools. I actually the manager over at Huntersville Swimming Pool. When the summer season comes on board, I'll be doing Berkeley and Chesterfield, overseeing the managers at that site, making sure that both those sites come on with enough staff to do what they have to do to do their job for their communities that they are serving. Okay, now these are indoor pools, so the lifeguards can't work on their tan while doing it, right? Well, uh, Huntersville is an indoor pool, but Berkeley and Chesterfield are outdoor pools. Oh, so they can work on it. Mm -hmm. But that's not why the lifeguards are there. No, it's safety. Provide safety. Okay, let's talk about April Pools, which is on April 21st. Right. April Pools Day is going to be April 21st, Huntersville Swimming Pool. Uh, good, that's the indoor one. That's the indoor one. Because I know we're having a warm day today, but it's still early April. <laughs> early April. <laughs> so, okay, why are you doing April Pools? Uh, we're trying to get the community involved in the safety aspect of swimming. And that day we'll be providing a lot of youth activities as far as learning how to swim, learning how to put on life jackets, take off life jackets, swim with the life jacket on. We'll be getting them into canoes and how to paddle canoes, how to enter the canoe safety, how to exit the canoe safely. Um, basically, just basic swimming skills uh, as far as safety goes. Oh, good. So I can relax. Unlike yes. Bob, Coach Wilder, you're not here to, or Karen Barnes, you're not here to tell me to exercise. You're here to tell me to be safe. To be safe. Exercise is good, but you need to be safe while you're exercising as well. Okay, and I got, Beverly, that's something that just kind of boggles my mind, because you can't go a half a mile around this town without, without running into water. True. The biggest employer we got is the Navy, and that usually means a ship on water. Mm -hmm. And yet we got a population that can't swim. Right. Doesn't right. make sense. Doesn't Why make sense. Why is that? 
education and we're now in that prospect of getting the education out there. You, we start with children like we teach kids uh, six months with the parent-child program. Uh, we do programs like April Pool's Day, Summer Plunge, which will be coming up soon as well. Uh, basically just getting involved in the community and trying to get families to come out and enjoy the program. We're trying to do, you have Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, this program would be excellent for them. Uh, church groups looking for programs for children in their churches, you know, just because you want them to be safe because summer is coming. And so we start with April Pool's Day even though we do have regular classes that we do throughout the year. But it's just a matter of getting the knowledge out there and trying to teach people on how to be safe. Okay, i got to ask you, because the last time I went into a canoe, or it was actually into a kayak, it was not a pretty scene. How do you get into a canoe or a kayak? You have to stabilize the canoe or the kayak, and you have to get down low. And you don't... Oh, that's right. where I went wrong. Yeah, you have to get low, and you ease in, you know, step to the side, then you ease your body down, stand down, and then you have your seat. Uh, you don't want to be trying to do go from here to this point to that point. But in time, you can move in canoes and kayaks, but you still have to keep your weight centered and stay down. In the center bore. Mm -hmm. Okay. And stay now, down. If, if just say for the sake of a conversation, it flips over, what do you do? Well, you want to stay with the canoe or the kayak. Uh, if you under, you want to try to, you know, just come from under there. And basically, you can touch on the side, you know, grab the side, come from under the canoe. And definitely, first thing you want to have on when you get in that canoe is a life jacket. But they're uncomfortable and they get in the way of the tan. No, they won't. Because if you flip, you're going to be glad you have it You're going to be glad you have that life jacket on. I wouldn't advise, as a quietest person, uh, anybody to be out on the water without a life jacket in any type of uh, craft. Okay, so what about that person says, yeah, but I know how to swim and I'm good at it. You need a life jacket on because you've got current currents that you're going to run into. The water is so unpredictable. Regardless of what skills that you think you have, you still want to make sure that you have all the extras that goes along and ensures your safety. You got it. Now, okay, I don't own a kayak. I don't own a so I'll never be on one. Why do I need to learn how to be around one? Because you never know when you might have to be in one. What if you go on a cruise and something happens? That's true. Or, you, because we are putting in some boat docks and we are putting in some opportunities to do that kind of right. thing. So you must be able to participate in it, right? That's right. And there's a lot of uh, canoeing expeditions going around on the water now. You know, you're an outgoing person, so you're going to want to do those things you eventually. Okay, I got to ask you this because I'm reading down here on, on our crack research that we did. Water safety stations, pool and beach safety, canoe and small watercraft safety, use of life jackets, self-rescue and water. Mm -hmm. Self-rescue? How do you self-rescue? Self-rescue self is knowing, trying to know where you are and get to a certain distance. Just like if you've got your life jacket on, you can get in, you know, put your hands here and you want to stay in a certain area mm -hmm. to risk to help actually get there you know just venturing off and trying to swim go here go there normally you know somebody's going to come and get you because if you go out if you venture out you're going to wear yourself out right now, i got to ask you because this the event is free the event is free open to the public open to the public here's the one that got me swimsuits required swimsuits required because we're going into a swimming pool we don't want to go in and cut off, you know, because you're going to mess up, you know, the mechanisms and stuff in, in the plumbing and stuff like that. You know, the pumps and stuff as the water is filtering back through, all that stuff comes back through too. Okay, so you're mainly concerned about people showing up in street Swim clothes wanting to go swimming. Right. Okay. April Pool's Day on April 21st. Is there a phone number or a website they can go to? They can go to, uh, they can call 664-7431. Uh, at the city of Norfolk, that's Huntersville Swimming Pool, we will register them on the phone, with, especially if they have groups larger than 10. Okay. Beverly, thanks for everything that you're doing, and you have been doing for a long time. Yes. In keeping our community safe on the water. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. We want to hear from you what you'd like to see on TV 48, but more importantly, what's going on in your neighborhood? What would you like to celebrate in 2012? Give us a holler at 664-6510, and as usual, it's a wonderful time to be in Norfolk just because of you. Thank you.